Welcome back to the channel. My name is Steven. I'm a pharmacist and I own 52 units of real estate. So today I want to talk about how I became a millionaire by 27 years old while working a full-time W-2. And fast forward to today, I am 34 and my net worth is 6 million. I have a video doing a deep dive on that. So please check that out on my channel. Um, but today I want to talk about how I became a millionaire by 27. And to be honest, I didn't even know I became a millionaire at 27 uh, while working a full-time W-2. So at that phase of my life, I've been working as a pharmacist for about um, four years and I came out with $250,000 of student debt, right? So um, what I kind of did initially was I paid off my student loans and, you know, from there I was able to invest, have margin and then in invest to grow my net worth to a million dollars by 27. So I want to go over at least five tips that um, helped me uh, become successful and helped me um, get there. So um, the first tip is you want to invest in yourself and continually self-educate. So for me, um, I always want to better myself. I would always, um, I didn't listen to as many podcasts back then, but I was always like hungry for more. Like I want to understand what's a 401k, what's whole life insurance, um, what's real estate. You know, I was just very curious and, um, you know, I didn't use YouTube as much back then as I do now, but I, I was always focused on like trying to improve myself, right? Whether I can improve myself physically, uh, financially, can I improve myself in my W-2? Can I improve myself on learning how to invest? Can I learn how to pick stocks, right? So I was always very curious and um, that's what really helped me become a millionaire. And even now, right? Like I learned how to do real estate in California. I learned how to house hack. I learned how to buy out of state real estate. I learned how to buy multifamily real estate out of state. I learned how to do value add real estate. I learned how to finance apartments. I learned how to refinance apartments. I learned about mobile home parks. I learned how to sell a mobile home park. I learned what not to do in a mobile home park, right? So I'm continuously challenging myself, putting myself in my, out of my comfort zone and pushing myself to learn. And either you learn or you, or you uh, win money, right? If you lose, you learned. If you won, you made money, right? So you always have to continue to self-educate yourself. And this is a never-ending process, right? So this is why I listen to a lot of YouTube. I listen to a lot of podcasts um, on a daily basis. Um, so I'm always trying to improve myself mindset wise and try to get any advantage that I could. Right. So I don't listen to news. I don't watch as much sports. I don't watch as many movies. I, I really, am just educating myself on my daily commute every day whenever I can. So step number one is investing yourself and self educate. Right. So sounds pretty obvious. The second step is you want to save money to invest so that you can grow your money. Right. And, and this is multi pronged So, you know, I was, I was a pharmacist taking home maybe $6,000 a month. And after my student loans, which was maybe around like $1,500, um, you know, I'd have about $3,500 left. And then I would have a thousand in, in living expenses. Um, so I'd have about $2,000, just give it, give or take to learn to invest. Right. So for me at the time, when I was 23, all I knew was about the 401k, like max out your 401k, which is almost, I think, $19,000, $20,000 a, a year at that point. And then when I bought into the 401k, I just thought the most simple option was just owning the S&P 500. I didn't really know much about it. But then later learned after learning that you want low cost index funds that do the whole stock market because those typically will do better long term and much more passive compared to like actively buying stocks. Um, so, you know, you have to set money aside to invest, right? So regardless if you have a W-2, if you have a business, you've got to set money aside to invest and then that's how you grow your money, right? So for me, uh, I invest heavily in real estate, right? Most of my net worth, about $5 million, is built from real estate equity uh, after you factor in the the loan, right? So I own about $11 million in, sorry, $10 million in real estate by $5 million in debt. So I have $5 million in equity. Um, so what you do is you save up, let's say $100,000, to put 10% down on a million dollar home. And then over the span of a couple of years, uh, due to natural market appreciation, you know, I was fortunate to buy during COVID, but like if your property appreciates by $200,000, then you basically put $100,000 and you made $200,000 on your money, you know, on paper, right? So that's how you grow your worth, your self -worth, net worth further, right? Is, is you learn how to leverage in your real estate. And, you know, keep in mind when you're first buying real estate, you're leveraging more than usual, but as you, own real estate longer, longer like me, you start to deleverage, right? So when I first bought real estate, I have a video talking about this too. I was roughly putting 10% down 
Um, but now that my real estate portfolio is built equity and I forced equity doing value add strategies, I'm roughly 50% debt, 50% equity. So you have, I have a video talking about that, right? And then you have to learn how to invest in yourself, right? So right now I'm, I'm developing social media. I'm, I'm developing coaching. I'm developing another business and, you know, it costs money to do business, right? So I'm investing in that and, and learning uh, as I'm going along, right? So you have to learn how to save money to then invest into real estate, to invest into stocks, to invest into a business that you're developing yourself, right? That can make you even more money, right? In invest in other skill set to self-educate yourself, right? I joined mentorships, right? That's why it inspired me to create my mentorship was because it, do, joining a mentorship helped me so much build my wealth that I want to help others do the same, right? Um, the next one is, um, and I kind of mentioned it, is, is max out your 401k every year. Right, like if you have a W two, this is a low hanging fruit. You know, some companies get match, so in a sense, that's kind of free money. Um, and you know, you just automate it every month, right? So for me, if if I'll put in whatever to the max, maybe like fifteen hundred bucks a month um, into a pre tax Roth or a Roth four hundred one k or whatever. You know, if you want pre tax advantages or you want after tax advantages. So for me, um, when I was making less W two, I did Roth, but now that I'm making a high income W two. Um, I actually do my traditional 401k and eventually I'm going to roll over my traditional 401k to a Roth when I have losses from real estate to offset that, right? So that's kind of my, my, my goal. So right now I'm doing pre-tax 401k. So when I start, I'll doing Roth, but don't overcomplicate it. Just pick one, right? Like just pick one and you can pivot or do both, half, half, right? Some people do half Roth, half pre-tax, right? Just really don't overthink it. Just max it out every year and learn to live with whatever money's left over, right? Uh, my next one is, you know, number four is pay off my student loans. So I had $250,000 student debt. And, you know, once again, you have to uh, have a paycheck and then say, allocate some of that paycheck to your monthly loan payment. And then on top of that, allocate more money to pay down the principal faster. That's what I did, right? So let's just say my monthly payment was 1000 bucks a month. And in the beginning, it's mostly interest. And a little bit of principal. So let's just say I have that thousand, two hundred goes down to principal, eight hundred goes to interest. And what I would do is I'd put another thousand dollars in if I can afford it that month. And that would be a principal payment. So it accelerates your payment significantly and saves you interest long term. Right. So for example, um, I took home five thousand bucks a month. Let's say a thousand bucks was a living expense because I was living in a room and I have four thousand dollars left. One thousand dollars went to my loan, right? And then, so that's $3,000 left. Another $1,000 went to my savings. And another $1,000, you know, maybe went to 401k. And then the, whatever is left over, um, you know, I would throw at my student loans, whatever was left, right? And I, I would do it as an extra principal payment. And then once you're free of that student debt, uh, you feel a sense of relief. And the moment I was free from my student debt, was the moment I started buying real estate, right? In 2017, I paid off $250,000 student debt. And now I'm financial. And now, um, it allowed me to focus on buying real estate, right? I couldn't think about real estate until my student debt was gone. Um, so that's why for me, paying off student debt was really instrumental in me building a million dollar net worth by 27, working a full-time W2. Uh, and my last one um, is, you know, take risk in your 20s and, and th early 30s, right? You know, take risk before you have a family. And that's also something I'm very fortunate about. Like, that's why I, I scale, invested so heavily in real estate and in business because I, I could take risk, right? Like I, I bought a mobile home park and I lost 100K. Yes, it sucks, but I can take the hit because I'm working full-time W2 and I have no kids, no family, right? But if I had kids and a family, I was my life savings, I'd be stressful, right? I, I invested in the Amazon dropshipping store, lost 30K. I opened an independent pharmacy, lost 30K. I... Um, what else? There's one more thing that I invested in and, and, and lost 30K. But I tried multiple things, right? And then once you try multiple things, you realize what you like and what works for you. So for me, I like, you know, social media, YouTube, coaching, mentoring. That comes natural for me. And I used to do it for free, right? And um, by taking these risks, it, I can afford to, right? Like you said, like, yeah, it sucks I lost 200K. But at the end of the day, like, it's not going to make me homeless. It's something that I can afford to lose. And um, I have no regrets now. And it gave me a lot of clarity as to what I want to do. So for me, it's all about, you know, giving value in social media, um, continuing to buy real estate slowly, um, optimizing my income and expenses and continuing to self-educate and sharing what I learned. Like, that's what really brings me joy. 
and um, I don't have a family yet, right? And even if you do have a family, um, you know, obviously you can't take as big of a risk, but you can still take very calculated, methodical risk, right? Like don't bet the farm on it. Like whatever you invest, expect to lose it, right? Don't make it your whole life savings. Like, hey, I'm going to max out my credit card and do this. Um, and, you know, by all means you could, you know, like you said, uh, if you're already broke and why not, you know, take a risk. But if you get, if you file for bankruptcy, it's going to wipe you out, right? And then your credit card's going to be terrible. So, you know, take risks before you have a family, um, you know, in your 20s. So, you know, hopefully you found back from this video. This is how, you know, five quick tips that how I, what I use to become a millionaire by 27. I'll work in full time W2. Like I said, I didn't even know I was a millionaire. But to kind of summarize the five tips, you know, the first one is invest in yourself and always self educate. Number two is, um, save money to invest so that you can grow your money so you can learn how to invest in real estate invest in business invest in yourself um, max out your 401k every year like just automate it and forget it um, number five is pay off your student loans once again um, create a plan create a system and then do extra principal payments to free yourself of the student debt and the last one number five is take risk in your 20s and before you have a family so that you can learn and get clarity let me know if you have any questions down below. Um, hopefully you gained that from this video. It gave you some clarity, gave you some insight. Please share this video. Like, comment, subscribe, and let me know if you have any questions. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.